Hi everyone, welcome to Cooking with Chef Rich. Today we have something special. We have a guest chef, Chef Julian. Hi everyone. Good. April is Autism Awareness Month and Julian is on a spectrum. He's a very close friend of mine's son and he's guest chefing with me today. Julian does take um, cooking classes at a local vocational school, so he does like cooking. And today we're going to be making some vegetable burgers. Uh, Julian's on somewhat of a special diet, mostly vegetarian. So we're going to make some vegetable burgers from scratch. And do, do you like to eat food, Julian? Yes. Good. You like burgers? Yes. Good. Is there anyone special you want to say hello to? No. There's nobody you want to say hello to? Maybe Mrs. Z? Hi, Ms. Z. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. So we're going to jump right in. We're going to talk about our ingredients. Uh, our mushrooms decided to hide from us. Sorry. So anyway, I have some mushrooms. I have onions, chopped garlic, flavored breadcrumbs, whole eggs, parsley, quick cooking oats, some Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, basil, and oregano. So we're going to jump right in and start cooking. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start sauteing our onions. We don't want to get them brown. We just want them to be translucent. I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in our pan. Hey, Julian, come here. You're going to grab the onions. Onions. We're going to pour all the onions in here. You're going to use your hand. Go on. Good. And when that starts, when that starts to uh, simmer, we're going to um, stir that. Okay. While that is going, actually, you're going to stand over here now. We're going to start. We're going to be making something called a mushroom duck cell, uh, minus carrots and celery. Classically, a mushroom duck cell is basically in English a mushroom stuffing. Uh, normally, it has celery and carrots as well as onions and garlic and mushrooms. Um, we're going to omit the carrots and celery today. So, hey Julian, come over here. You're going to stir this every, okay? Be careful, this could be very hot, okay? Because there's fire. Okay, so you're going to stir that every now and then. While he's doing that, uh, you can chop the mushrooms by hand. I'm actually just going to throw them into a Cuisinart, or into a food processor, I should say. I'm just going to throw the mushrooms into a food processor and puree them lightly. You definitely don't want to overcrowd your food processor if you're going to use the food processor for, for this. And that's pretty good. How's that going? All right. Actually, uh, just put these right back in the same bowl. So anyway, um, if you've ever had beef wellington, and, or if you've ever made beef wellington, either way, that uses a mushroom duck cell. Um, a beef wellington is beef tenderloin with a mushroom duck cell and uh, wrapped in puff pastry. So just to give you some ideas of what this is used for. That's too hot. Are you okay? And I'm just gonna keep pureeing these. The onions are probably gonna take about five minutes to cook. So I'm gonna work on pureeing these. This is going to cook, and I'll show you what it looks like in about five minutes. See you shortly. So our onions have been cooking for probably about four or five minutes, and they're just starting to turn brown a little bit, but that's fine. And the next thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to add our mushrooms. So Julian, you're going to take one of the quarter mushrooms in? Yeah. No, just take your hand. Your hand. Take your hand. No, not the glove. Take the mushrooms. And anyway, so we're gonna put the heat back on high and I'm gonna cook this for probably anywhere between five and 10 minutes. What's gonna happen is all the water's gonna come out of the mushrooms and then we're just gonna keep cooking until all the water reduces down to, to dry. Okay, so 
I'll show you what it looks like as we go. See you shortly. Our mushrooms have been cooking just for about three or four minutes. I just want to show you what they look like. You'll notice that there's a lot of water in the pot. That's perfectly normal. What's going to happen is we're just going to keep cooking this and stirring it for, like I said, probably about five or six minutes more until all the water evaporates and it's totally dry. Okay, so I just wanted to show you and I will see you in a bit. So the first time I ever made a mushroom duck cell, I was back in culinary school and I had apprenticed for something called the Master Chef's Exam. People use the term Master Chef all the time. Oh, are you a Master Chef? Real Master Chefs are certified by the American Culinary Federation and you'll know that they're a certified Master Chef. You'll see the letter CMC at their name, Certified Master Chef. So anyway, when I was in culinary school, I had apprenticed for the Master Chef's exam. As a gift, the Culinary Institute of America gave me a book. And what the book was is every four years in Frankfurt, Germany, there is something called the Culinary Olympics or the International Cooking Competition. Anyway, in 1980, the United States won the hot foods competition for something called Turkey Breast Oklahoma. What Turkey Breast Oklahoma is, it's, it looks like a jelly roll, but it's basically a turkey mousse with a mushroom duck salad and then jelly rolled. It's a very, very nice dish. It's relatively inexpensive to make, so it's what they call a low food cost item, but it's a beautiful, like makes a beautiful presentation. So when I was younger, when they gave me this book, I used to practice making that, and I used to have to make a mushroom duck cell all the time. So I just figured I'd share that story with you. Anyway, uh, this has another few more minutes to cook, and I will show you what it looks like. See you shortly. So our mushroom duck cell, or mushroom stuffing, has been cooking for right about 10 minutes, I'm guessing. And if you come over and take a look, pretty much all the liquid is dried up. There's virtually no liquid in there. So we're pretty good with that. And the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to take this and move it into a bowl. Turn off our fire. Careful, really hot. So her bowl just disappeared. And the next thing we're gonna do, you can't add eggs to this immediately because, because this is really hot, it'll cook the eggs immediately. So we're gonna add the oats and the breadcrumbs to this. Um, where are the breadcrumbs? And add the seasoning as well. And parsley. And you want to stir that, but stir it slowly, okay? Because it is hot. What's going to happen is the breadcrumbs and the oats will cool down the mixture, and then we can add our eggs to it. Okay, Julian? Yeah. Is it too hot? You want to move it a little bit away from your face? All the steam's going in your face. Mmm, this smells like noodle soup. It smells like noodle soup? Yes. Really? Oh, your mother would probably puts mushrooms in the noodle soup. So this is actually still a little bit too hot to add the eggs. So I'm going to let this cool for a couple minutes and then we'll continue. So I'll see you in a couple minutes. So I let our mushroom mix cool a little bit. And after like just feeling it, it is actually relatively a perfect consistency. So I'm not gonna even bother adding the eggs, that way I, I can keep it vegan. Obviously, if you're vegan, you have to use a vegan cheese. You can add the cheese now, and Julian's gonna mix it in. That's pretty good. You're gonna put, put your gloves on. I'll put some gloves on too. And what you're gonna do, oh, you still got you still have a glove to put on, so. So this is our mix right here. This is actually all of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make four really nice burgers out of this. Divide that in half. And then I'm gonna divide this in half. Roughly about there. 
Hey, Julian, you're gonna roll that into a really tight ball, like so. Gonna pack it down. That's too big for a burger, isn't it? That's way too big for a burger. Here, let's take a little bit out of there. That's a huge burger. Try to pack it down really good. And then we're gonna just kinda smush it into a burger. So we have a nice, similar to like an eight ounce burger. And you're gonna do another one, Julia. There you go. Yeah, so by keeping it um, without the eggs, it's easier to make vegan. And if you look at the consistency, the consistency is perfect. Wow, we'll nice, four nice big burgers. Good. Here's one more for you. Oh, that's so tiny. That's a baby burger. We're gonna make a slider out of that one. How's that sound? You know what a slider is? What? The slider's a mini burger. You never had a mini burger? I no? I had. Cool. What'd you have? I had them in Voltec. Oh, okay. So you've had sli sliders before. Good. Perfect. You could also make meatballs out of these, actually, now that I'm looking at it. And what we're going to do is. I'm just gonna give it a quick spray so it doesn't stick to our grill. You tired, Julian? No. And now we're gonna go outside and grill. So let's go outside. We have our vegetable burgers over here and the Weber's a little hot. I'm just gonna give it a quick spray with some cooking spray. Be careful if you do that. And we're gonna put our burgers down. Burgers on high, or the grill's on high. And they're gonna cook probably for about four or five minutes. All the ingredients inside are fully cooked. So really we're just marking them and heating them and lunch will be served. See you shortly. Burgers have been cooking for right about three or four minutes. And I'm just gonna do something, I'm gonna spin them um, 90 degrees. And what that's gonna do is gonna give really nice grill marks. And I'm gonna let this go for another three or four minutes and I'll show you what they look like. So, the burgers have been cooking probably for right about three or four minutes on this side, and now I'm just gonna flip them over. Nice grill marks. That was a little bit well done, but all right. The back of the grill is obviously harder, hotter than the front of the grill. I did not know. So, all right. Um, I'm gonna cook these for another few minutes and I'll show you what they look like. Once again, I am going to spin these 90 degrees. Come here for a second. If you look at the, like, see how that has beautiful grill marks? By just spinning it 90 degrees exactly, that's how you get those nice grill marks. And these will cook for another two to three minutes and lunch is served. All right. In three minutes. One last important part. I forgot to add cheese to these. Uh, I'm just adding some American, but you can go with cheddar, um, Havarti, any type of cheese you like. We'll go great on these. Mind you, I'm somewhat of a purist. I'm just putting some ketchup on. If you like other types of sauces, you can put all types of sauces. You can put sauteed onions and mushrooms on here. You can do any type of um, any type of hamburger topping you like. So I'm gonna take these off in about two minutes. I'm gonna throw them on a bun and I'll show you what they look like and I'll see you in two minutes. 
So our veggie burgers came off the grill. I put them on a potato bun with some lettuce, tomato, and got a little ketchup and some avocado on the bottom. So I don't know if you can see, see the avocado down there, but I'm avocado on the bottom. And so it's actually a very, very nutritious lunch. And we're gonna try it. So then look at the camera. How was it, Julian? Really, really, really good. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and uh, hit the bell. Please leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Be well. Bye-bye.